One of the more difficult areas to troubleshoot in any groupwise system is the groupwise mobility service. One way to simplify troubleshooting is to have a greater understanding of the architecture and message flow used by the mobility server. At the heart is the mobility server itself. As of Groupwise 18.2, the mobility server is required to run on either SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12 or 15 operating system. The system minimum for memory on the server is 4 gigabytes of RAM and 200 gigabytes of disk space on the VAR partition. But remember to lower your expectations when providing only the minimal amount of resources. Groupwise Mobility Services was written in Python 2 and will soon see a rewrite to Python 3. The database used to store data is a Postgres database. Both of these are installed when configuring the mobility server. Our first concern when thinking of architecture and troubleshooting problems is understanding how the mobility server talks to the Groupwise system. During the installation of the server, a few key pieces of information are required to enable the mobility server to communicate with Groupwise. The name and key for a trusted application running within the Groupwise system, an IP address or host name and port of a Groupwise POA running SOAP, and also whether or not that POA is servicing SOAP requests through an SSL connection. Once the server is running, an initialization process occurs for each of the users configured on the mobility server. During that initialization, the mobility server creates an event notification process at the POA for each mobility user that's on that post office. This event notification captures events of every type that should be passed down to the phone. New, modified or deleted mail, calendar items, and contacts, to name a few. When a new event occurs on a GroupWise account, such as receiving a new mail message, the POA sends slap packets to the mobility server on port 4500, indicating that a new event is waiting for processing. If port 4500 is listening on the mobility server and unblocked by firewalls and all things are running smoothly, the mobility server requests the new data through a SOAP connection to the POA almost instantaneously. A way to see these events at the POA is to stop a running mobility server and then send a new message to a GroupWise user who has a mobility account. You will need to access the HTTP console for the post office that that user belongs to. Once you are in the POA HTTP console, click on Configuration and then Event Configuration List. Find the user ID of the user in question and click on the hyperlink with that user ID. Then click the Show Events checkbox and click Submit. If there are events waiting to be passed to the mobility server, you will see them in this list. In a smooth running mobility system, this should never show more than a few entries and only for a short amount of time. If there are many listed here, then slapping of the mobility server is not happening or the mobility server is so overworked that it isn't able to process users in a timely manner. In troubleshooting your mobility server, if a user is not showing events in this area, then it's likely that this isn't the area of concern. It would be a good idea to see if messages are being passed through the system successfully. After the mobility server is passed events by the POA, there are two hops messages must traverse in order to make it to the device. It first must be written to the DataSync Postgres database, and then it must be converted and then written to the Mobility Postgres database. A good test to perform to see if both of these steps are successful is to do the following. Uh, first, you will want to make sure that Mobility Server is set to debug logging. To do this, you will want to log into the Mobility Administration Server, and then click on the Config icon in the upper right area, and under the General Selection, you should see a Log Level option. If this is not set to debug, then make that change now and select Save. If you did make that change, you will want to go into the Home Selection on the top and then stop and start the GroupWise Sync Agent as well as the Device Sync Agent. This should restart each agent and begin logging in debug mode without stopping and starting the entire GMS system.
Once the logging is set to debug, you will want to open two different terminal windows or PuTTY windows to the mobility server. Once they are open, you will want to change to the var log data sync connectors directory in both windows. In each window, we will type a command that will show us a line that will confirm if and when each agent has processed the message. In the first window, we type the command tail f groupwise dash agent dot log pipe grep and then you'd want to put in a case matching string that will be the subject line in our test message. In the second window we type the command tail dash f mobility dash agent log pipe grep and again put in the subject line matching the case for a message we plan to send in just a second. We then test how things are being processed by sending the mobility user a new message preferably from an outside account, to the account we are monitoring. It is best to send a message with a unique subject line. In our example, let's send a new message with Gladiator as the subject line. If all things are processing properly, you will see the message appear in the GroupWise inbox, and shortly thereafter you will see the string Gladiator on the window monitoring the data sync agent, and then on the window monitoring the mobility agent. If they don't show on either, you will want to go back and check the events window that we've discussed previously. If the message has touched all windows, the last action is for the device to connect and download it. More times than not, if the device is configured incorrectly, the end user will see errors during the setup. It is possible that delays can be caused on the device by having too many devices from different users trying to retrieve their data simultaneously. A couple of quick checks will help us to determine if devices are accessing the server and if there are enough threads to process these device requests. Clear one of the two terminal windows used previously and type in the command tail f mobility agent log pipe grep capital C M D pipe grep and then put in the user ID. If the device is connecting, you will see references roll by on the screen for that user's device. This only tests whether the device is connecting. Looking through the logs may help to determine if there are authentication errors. Lastly, to determine if the number of devices simultaneously connecting to the mobility server is overwhelming the server, enter the command tail f mobility agent log pipe grep and then in quotes idle space threads. Note the case sensitivity here. If the number of idle threads is consistently 1, then you may need to increase the number of threads to a maximum of 20, or if that maximum has been reached, it might be time to spin up a new mobility server or an extra mobility server. The TID number that explains the process of increasing the number of device threads is 7014654. We hope you find this information helpful in troubleshooting your mobility system. Additional help can be found in the online documentation. You can also search for known issues and fixes at support.microfocus.com. Thank you.